Okay, you're ready to create a course, you wanna do your research, you need a syllabus, course content, all the great stuff. So you're gonna to go to your favorite AI tool and use a prompt that you learn and you're gonna get some great output. Is it really what you wanted? A huge problem with all of this AI generated content is it's not authentic. And you can tell right away if you've ever taken a mini course or a free course or downloaded a PDF or some material, you look at it, you know right away whether it was created without the author or if it was created with the author's unique perspective and all of the things that you wanna to bring to your learning when you're teaching people something, right? So what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna show you kind of a neat trick that I learned today earlier from watching one of the people that I subscribe to on YouTube. And I'm gonna show how I took the idea that he presented specifically for creating what's called a voice profile that you can give to a chat GTP or Notebook LM or any of these AI tools. Uh, and this voice profile is designed to make sure that anything that the AI tool returns to you in a response matches the voice profile that you gave it. And this is a really big thing because when you think about it, you take a look at what you might've been doing in the past working with ChatGPT is a lot of times what happens is you hear stuff about prompt engineering and you know how to prompt well, that kind of thing. And normally what happens is you go and you find a prompt or a prompt, a uh, couple prompts. And what you do is you start with a prompt and you follow one of the frameworks are there. And what happens is ChatGPT or whatever tool you have gives you a response. And you go, wow, that's great. I really like that. It showed me all of this stuff. And you read it through and you go, uh, it kind of sounds like ChatGPT gave me this actual thing. So what you do is you, you go back and you ask it to clarify. You have a conversation with it. You're going back and forth and you say, let's make it or change it or alter it. So you're going to make a request. And often the requests are also about how do I make it more human? So you're going to make all these things and say, make it less technical or make it more conversational or make it more serious or try and get it set up for a grade five or grade six uh, uh, reading uh, level. So you're going to do all these prompts and try and clean stuff up to make it work well. Now the problem is that that generally takes time takes a lot of time to do because it's back and forth, back and forth. And more importantly, you end up with a not very human. Why? Because you've got no consistent way to say to ChatGPT, this is the way that I want you to bring me back the responses you give that fit this big, broad description of how I sound how me personally. So instead of doing it this way, the old way, what Eddie does, and uh, I'll show you his website. And again, I've got all of his links here and I'm gonna actually show it to you. And I want you to make sure that you watch his entire video. What he did is he said, you know what? I'm gonna give you a voice profile prompt. And you're, I'm gonna get that to you as well. So. Uh, What's going to happen is he says, I want you to create this voice profile prompt first. And then once you have a voice profile, I want you to give the voice profile to the AI tool so that any responses that you get from the tool are there. Once it has that prompt or voice profile, then you do your question or you ask or you prompt, okay? So that changes the way things work at this point. It's not a question of you going and saying, okay, give me a response and I'll clean it up. You're saying only give me a response that already sounds human. This saves you a whole bunch of time and it provides a consistency, but more importantly, it saves you a lot less work because any of the work that you're doing, you're getting something back that looks like you that's authentic. And that's the part that stands out now with all of this content available and all these people that are doing stuff with ChatGPT and creating, you know, slop content and slop courses, they're not allowing themselves the time and the energy it takes to put themselves into the content that they're presenting to you. And I think moving forward, my personal gist on this is that if you are not in your content, it's not going to sell. And more importantly, you're not going to be able to build the audience, 
the community and the members and customers and students that you need to build an education business. So what I did is I went and I came from this. Where did I come from it? I came from it. We'll just open this up here. I came from it from a gentleman by the name of Eddie Ballesteros and I'll, I'll make sure that you get the links on this one here. Uh, and what it is, is here's the video. It's the new way to humanize content. And again, I'll give you the link to this one. Really, really great video. You gotta watch the whole thing. Please watch the whole thing. And what he did in this is, again, he gives you all, of, uh, this is stuff that he gives you. So just watch his video. He gives you all of this content, a presentation. He has a membership site. I highly recommend you go take a look at it. Again, really super content. What he did is this prompt that he provides for us here, this prompt that's here is, let me just go and make sure that it's there. This prompt is basically it says, in the prompt he says, put your elevator pitch. So just write your bit of an elevator pitch here. And then he says, make sure that you put your audience in. And then when he's talking about using the prompt, he says, add a PDF or PDFs or some written articles that you've done, maybe blog posts. He says, add it to ChatGPT and then run this prompt. And when you run the prompt, what happens is ChatGPT is gonna go look at the PDFs that you uploaded, the blog post articles that you put in, and it's going to create a voice profile. And that voice profile is gonna look at things like the linguistic features, like vocabulary, sentence structure, tonality, common phrases. It's gonna look at the way you structure the content in your blog posts and PDFs and eBooks. It's gonna take a look at the way you transition and the questions you ask and how you engage with the audience. So this is a great prompt and it's a great way to get started. The only problem for me is this has nothing to do with creating videos and verbally communicating and visually referencing stuff on the screen if it's based only on a PDF or an ebook or a blog post that you did. So I'm teaching people, how do I use the same idea, but I wanna make sure that everything that I do with this is in context with the kind of information that I'm sharing, which is an audio, a video, a screen capture, pictures, stuff that I'm inter, uh, interacting with on the screen. It's not about the structure of the text necessarily. There's all of these additional pieces that you need to know about. So here's what I did to kind of put this together. As I said, you know what? Instead of doing it the way that was kind of structured here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two prompts. So I gave it one prompt and the first one, I said, go take a look at all of my videos and I gave it a prompt and I said, from those videos, create a document or a description of my teaching style. So I want a document of my teaching style. And this is like a big global picture of how I teach stuff when I'm doing videos. And then I said, once I have that, what I want to do is I want to get a second prompt. And what that's going to do is not my voice profile, but my video profile. So I didn't wanna create a voice prompt or voice style. I wanna create a video style that relates to how I teach. So I created two prompts and the part that's interesting uh, throughout this is I, you know, Eddie talked about um, three things here. He talked about, you know, the audience engagement, the content structure and the linguistic features. And what I was doing throughout this is I was going, Okay, how, how, what are the changes that I need to represent teaching? So what are the things that are uh, Im important to me? And when I went back and forth with ChatGPT saying, hey, look, if I'm creating content that's visual and not necessarily text, what are some other things that you would need to know so that you could really understand my teaching style? And it came up with a whole bunch of additional pieces. And I'll go through some of them here that were something just to consider about. So instead of just doing linguistics, content and engagement, it talked about fixing up the elevator pitch and including things like the value proposition, keywords and themes, the tone and emotional resonance, the visual and structural preferences. If I'm talking about something on a screen as an example, that's not something that's in an article, that's something that's in a video. 
Engagement style, how do you engage with people? How frequently does it happen on the video? Storytelling and relatability. Again, important things when you're teaching. Preferred formats, the links, the different kinds of content that's created, how interactive are they? And here's the ones that were kind of interesting. The prerequisites, examples, and analogies, which is important. Emotional triggers. And one of the ones that it came up with in here was teaching patterns. So how are you actually teaching stuff to people? How are you putting this all together so that it makes sense when you're actually teaching stuff in your videos? And I got that and I said, well, you know what? I better create a prompt that will analyze all of my videos and go and do that. So that's exactly what I did is I created a prompt for that. And when I did it, this prompt is what I came up with. And I'm gonna keep these with you so you'll have them as well. You'll have all of Eddie's links and stuff will be there to his, but I'll also include these, these two prompts that uh, I designed to do a teaching style and a video style. So teaching style prompt. What this one is, it said master pre-prompt and final prompt for a personal uh, vi video style prompt. So this document provides a comprehensive guide for creating a personalized uh, prompt AI tools. And what the prompt is, is this big thing that asks for the elevator pitch, the audience, linguistics, same thing, content structure, emotional triggers, teaching patterns is what I called it, engagement hooks, storytelling and relatability, all about those rapport skills, structures and calls to action. So I had all of that, my prompt, but I, where are the videos that I'm gonna check? Well, here's what I did. I actually went and I opened up some of my YouTube videos that I created and I looked at all the ones that I liked that I thought were pretty good, that I felt that I communicated well, and I just grabbed the transcriptions of them. Now you can do that with a tool. Um, the one, I've, for example, that I've used in the past is Tactic. I've used Glasp. There's a whole bunch of them available. I'll put the links below. But you're gonna get a transcription of the video. And if you don't have any of those tools, you can go right into YouTube and basically download the transcription. Just, uh, just uh, copy it and paste it. And I just pasted it directly into a document. This is one long honking document. It's 30 pages long. And all that it has is unformatted transcriptions of videos that I've done in the past. So I've got this particular big library of my transcriptions. And then what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, great. Here's the prompt that we're uh, taking a look at here. I'm gonna copy this prompt, my teaching style prompt, and I'm gonna have it analyze that big long document that I have. And when I've done that, I've now got my teaching style is now available to me. So I have a master teaching style. That's the one that comes up with me. That's the one that shows up. That's the one that's important because that particular piece is the framework that everything is built off of, that teaching style. Now, if I have the teaching style, I go and take a look at that and I'm figuring, okay, great, I got a teaching style, what do I need next? Well, I need to have that video um, uh, profile that I can give to ChatGTP or any of the other tools so that it understands what's going on. And if you haven't used this before, where does this come into play? If you are using, for example, I'll open up a copy of Claude here. And Claude is one of the ones I like using for courses because uh, it has something called projects in the paid version. And what projects are is, for example, if you have one course, you could have the course as a project and each of those, uh, each of the individual lessons can be a separate standalone chat. So you can have a project with seven chats, eight chats in them, and those chats can just be about a lesson. That's the first thing that it does. The other thing that allows you to do with projects is if you go and you open up or create a new project, let me create a new one, and I'm gonna do uh, an example, just giving it a name. I'm gonna create a project here. When you're working on these projects, you can on the right hand side, you can see here, there's the upload documents. You can add all of your research from perplexity or any of the tools that I've talked about in other videos. You can add them as kind of your own library. And what happens is when Claude provides responses to you, a lot of it is gonna be based on the materials that you've put in. Now, the one that I wanna look at is this one right at the top here, just above that where it says set project instructions. 
And what this is, is this is where we're going to put our video profile in as the instructions for the entire uh, project. So what that means is anytime that I'm going to make, anytime I'm going to make an actual prompt, let's say I'm going to go and I'm going to ask it to create a syllabus or a course outline or a lesson outline or uh, any kind of materials that I'm creating for marketing, for emails, anything to do uh, with presenting stuff. Let's say it's a sales video script or it's the video script for a lesson. When, I, when it goes to create that, it's going to use my video profile as the baseline and any responses that it gives have to fit that video profile. So I'm just going to create one now and I'm going to paste it into this spot. So I have my teaching profile or my teaching document, I have that. What I need to do now is I need to go and again, I provided these for you so that you're going to have them. What I have is my video style prompt. And what this one is, is I just say, okay, here's my teaching style. What I want you to do in this prompt is I want you to take my teaching style and create some special instructions that actually show up that I can cut and paste into the tool that I'm using. So instead of one prompt that just gives you a voice profile, what I did is I created two prompts, one that creates that video teaching style, and then the second one is taking the video teaching style and then creating your video style prompt for creating your content. And all I would do is run this prompt based on the uh, teaching style that I had and what happens is I get a document and it looks like this. I'm just going to go and pick it out here. So I copy it and it goes through all of the things that are important to the presentations that I do because this is the video profile based on my teaching style. So I'm going to copy this. And then I'm going to go back to my chat GPT or my Claude tool, and I'm going to put it in as special instructions and I'm going to save the instructions. So now anytime I make a prompt in this particular project, it will always have to match this particular video style that I've created. Now this is something really cool because of course what happens is if you use this up front before you start asking it to create a video script, before you start asking it to create a lesson outline, before you start uh, asking it to create quizzes or uh, exercises to do or any of the other things you do in teaching, it has to go and take a look at that and say, does this fit the video profile or my special instructions? So it saves a huge amount of time, a huge much of en energy for you. And more importantly, it gets stuff more authentic for you because it's based on your personal teaching style and video style. So I put all the links below. Uh, I've included the links to uh, the link from uh, Eddie's video on YouTube. It's there. I've also put the links here for the two different prompts that you can use when you're playing around. And uh, of course, uh, if you want to ask questions about any of this, you want to learn more about it, please make sure to visit trainingsites.io. It's free to join there uh, in the community. And, uh, you know, my community here, we'll just open this one up. You can hit the trainingsites.io join that's over there, actually, uh, on the screen. Go and, uh, you know, become a free member. It's free to join and just come in in the community. And not only do we have free courses for you and all sorts of resources like these prompts, but it's a place where you can ask questions about start building and growing your education business, especially using AI tools and getting in front of yourself and the camera and having some fun sharing what you already know, do and love. My name is James. It's trainingsites.io. Uh, take care, expect the best, like and subscribe to the channel if you ha uh, haven't already, but please make sure to join the community. I'd love to chat with you inside, see what projects you're working on and see if uh, I can help you build your education business.